They just jumped on the roof. Oh, that's a big bird. You know, it seems like we're kind of like in the uh, horror movie. We're in this little shack, and then there's these big birds just jumping all around us. For the next several hours, we will be in this blind, attempting to trap some condors. You ready? Recently, I had the privilege of working alongside wildlife biologist Molly Estelle, where I assisted in gathering the biometrics of several critically endangered California condors. Molly has invited the team back to the Bitter Creek National Wildlife Refuge to help with another task. This time, the goal is to trap birds that need to have their health evaluated for the season. So how do you safely trap a bird that has a home range of over 100 miles and is capable of soaring as high as 15,000 feet? The answer is quite simple. Ring the dinner bell by serving up one of their favorite dishes, a smelly cow carcass. We will be setting up in a blind. This structure will allow us to stay completely hidden as the hungry condors are drawn in toward the tempting bait. The name of the game is patience and silence. We want to create as little noise as possible so that we don't spook our dinner guests. So you got the wild condors there, and then the ones that we're going to be releasing right there. Molly, what are you doing right now? Um, I'm trying to get the IDs of all the birds here. Okay. Um, so then, you know, who's in the area and who we've seen lately, um, and we can kind of keep track of what birds are around and what birds we haven't seen for a while. Okay, excellent. The team's goal is to trap birds whose health has not yet been evaluated this season. Molly can quickly look at the bird's numbered wing tags, reference her notes, and then determine which birds she needs to trap. Look at this, look at this. This is fantastic. It's condor overload. That one's pruning, that's number 20. Some adults are chasing each other. They just jumped on the roof. Oh, that's a big bird. You know, it seems like we're kind of like in a uh, horror movie. We're in this little shack, and then there's these big birds just jumping all around us. For the next several hours, we will be in this blind, attempting to trap some condors. You ready? All right, so I think we're about ready to open up that door, um, and then we'll see if our kids in there are gonna walk out into the wild for the first time. So I'm gonna slowly open up this door here. Okay. So here's what's going to happen. When Molly opens up that door, the hungry wild condors on the outside of the enclosure are going to be lured inside because of the cow carcass. This also allows the two condors that were already inside, which were born and raised in captivity, to exit the enclosure. 9.45 just walked out of the trap. It's taking us first steps into the wild. That's quite amazing. Did uh, 870 leave? The juvenile? Yeah. Yeah, right there. Right there? Oh, look at that. 870 is out and at the pond. So the, the two birds that we're gonna release are out in the wild for the first time. When you see something like that, how do you feel? It's, oh man, it's such a great moment. When you see them take their first flight and they're kind of like, whoa, whoa, like I can actually fly. And it's, it's amazing to watch. Yeah, you're kind of like a proud mom, right? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> it's great to see them out there. So Molly, is there a hierarchy when it comes to feeding? Yeah, and you can kind of see it as we're, as we're watching them here. You'll notice like 216, she's one of the more dominant birds out here. Okay. Um, and she has no problem just chewing off any other bird that's getting in her way. Um, but some of the younger ones, they're a little skittish. Oh, oh got a little fight going on here. A little fight? What's the next step? Um, the next step is basically we wait until the birds that we want are in the trap and the ones that we don't want are outside. Uh, and sometimes that can just take a while. So essentially, we wait in this cozy cabin shack. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so in the meantime, 
might do some photography. This is one-way glass, so they can't actually see us, but we can see them. So it could actually get the lens right up to the glass and potentially get some pictures. Oh, we got one coming in. That's a big boy. That's a big one. Wow. Check that out. We got that massive wingspan. And check out those primary feathers right there. So that's really distinct on condors. Look at that. And those feet, those feet kind of just dangle down. Got some snacks for everyone. Here you go, buddy. Thank you. You know, watching those condors devour that carcass got me hungry. Yeah. So there you go. Thank you very much. Wow. They're just digging into that carcass. There's actually not that much blood. They're getting all the tendons and stuff. They're ripping in there. Wow, look at all the guts. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the trap door and see if we can finesse some of these birds that we definitely wanna trap up into the main flight pen. What would prompt them to fly into that? Well, they can see that there's another carcass in the flight pen. Okay. Um, and there's no competition for that one, and it's it's looking pretty good. Gotcha. Let's see if this guy will go up. I think so. I think yep. I got him. Yep. I guess. All right, that one is officially inside the flight pen. We've trapped our first bird. Now, of course, when we mean trapped, we mean it's going into the flight pen. The flight pen is a larger enclosure where the birds are kept temporarily until the biologists actually process them and then release them again. The condors have consumed all the soft tissue of the carcass. Very fast, very efficient birds. Their whole design, their whole, whole head structure is designed to actually fit into the crevice of a carcass and be able to get in there and pick away all the choice morsels. We've been in this blind for hours, and we're almost done. We just have one final bird that needs to get into that main flight pen, and it's number 839. But it's kind of tricky because we also have three other birds in here that we do not want to get into that flight pen. It's a matter of Molly being quick with that gate. The purchase clear, 839 is on. All right, Molly. But be, be ready, because these two on the ground are Restless. Yeah. This is your chance, dude. Yep. Okay. 839 is in. Yes! Boom! <laughs> Great job, Molly. We got it. Got him. Heck yeah. All right, so we got all the target birds that we wanted to get into that flight pen. And the rest of these, actually, we will be able to release back into the wild. So that's fantastic. Yeah, mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Okay, we've been in this dark blind for several hours. Oh, it is bright out there. We are done. It was a successful day. Okay, Molly, we were in that blind for about four hours. How did we do? Yeah, we did great. Um, so we got those eight birds that we were trying to trap, which is fantastic. Um, and then we saw our two birds that we were releasing into the wild for the first time mm -hmm. make their way out into the world. Uh, with the rest of the free flying population. So, nice. Great day. Very successful day. Well, thank you for having me on the team. Thank you. Uh, we had a wonderful time helping out with the California Condor Recovery Program. What these biologists are doing is critical. All the hard work that you saw us doing, they're doing this on a regular basis to save this endangered species. All right, all that hard work deserves some lunch. You ready? Heck yeah, let's go. All right. The survival of the California condor depends on continued monitoring and conservation efforts conducted by dedicated people like Molly and her team. However, the protection of a species is a collective endeavor shared by all of us. One simple way to directly help this species is by encouraging hunters to use non-lead-based ammunition. This reduces the risk of condors consuming lead fragments left behind in the spoils of a hunt, which causes lead poisoning and high mortality rates in these birds. 
The actions don't have to be big, but over time, small actions can have the potential to create big results that can safeguard our planet's amazing biodiversity. Can't get enough of these fascinating birds? Then check out the live cameras at explore.org to catch a glimpse of them in real time. Just click on the link in the video description below. If you missed my first encounter with this critically endangered species, make sure to go back and watch the time I assisted Molly in gathering important biometrics from these enormous birds. And don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, ding, 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 so you can join me, Mario, on the next adventure.